Hi, Mike Salmon here. Just a video on valve authority and flow coefficient. What do they mean? Why are they important? How would we use them and when? So let's start with valve authority. Now, when we're selecting a balancing valve or any valve that controls flow through a circuit, it may also be a three-way rotary mixing valve, then we want it to have good authority, which will mean good flow control. How we do that is we, we need a balancing valve which has a delta P differential pressure, pressure drop across the valve of around 20 to 50% of the total circuit it is, it, is it is controlling, including the valve. So if we get the delta P of the balancing valve divided by a delta P of the mains, we'll have that valve authority figure here that we want to be between 0.2 and 0.5 or between 20 and 50%. If we go, if it's more than 50% of the resistance of the total circuit, that could be considered uneconomical in terms of pump energy, or below 20% would likely give flow, would definitely give poorer flow control, which is represented by this graph here. So you can see on the high authority valve, when we open the valve, we get a nice gradual increase in flow, more proportional to the percentage of the valve open. Or on the low authority valve here, we crack the valve open a small amount, we get a sharp increase in flow. You can liken this to your low resistance flat, flat seat valves, often your decorative chrome valves on those your own towel radiators or decorative, decorative designer radiators often. And here's your good quality lock shields and balancing valves here. And it just means that these valves with, with higher authority will have the higher resistance in relation to the circuit that they are in and they'll give good flow control okay so let's have a look at how it is imagine a three-way rotary valve you can see we're not looking at unlike in a mix in a, in a balancing valve or a ready to valve we're looking at the flow going straight through in this case we are looking at good authority over the circuit it is mixing from which would be this one here. So we have our flow from our boiler and our return from the boiler. It's blending down to give reduced flow temperature, say to an under, often an underflow heating circuit here. So the delta P across this valve wants to be between 20 and 50% roughly. The delta P across the entire circuit, including the valve. So how do we show that? Is we select the valve with the correct flow coefficient, which is the KV factor, and we calculate it using this formula here. But first, just a little bit about flow coefficient. So, flow coefficient will tell us how much flow in, cu in cubic meters per hour the valve will take to lose one bar of pressure. And this, this is useful because there is a square law relationship between flow rate and pressure loss. So if we double the flow rate from a valve, we will quadruple the pressure loss. Or if we halve the flow rate, we will um, the pressure loss will reduce to a quarter of its previous value. And that is the same through pipes or any any circuit that, fl that flow, any device that flow flows through. Okay, so I, I must use this formula here because I want to find the delta P. And I know my desired flow rate and my KV value will give me an answer in bar. I'll then convert it to a millibar, meters head, or kilopascals. And we've got some conversion factors here. You'll see, you'll see this is a common one, the CV, the US version here. Okay, so when we might use it would be if you see one of these scales here. This is a logarithmic scale. You can see because it does not have a linear increase across the axes. This is logarithmic on both the horizontal and the vertical axes. So this is used for illustrative purposes. It's not meant to, to be used where you go across one axis then up to the other. It's not meant to be used manually like that. It's just for illustrative purposes. You can see we've got our KV values here, which are our bouncing ring settings. You can see bouncing ring settings on this. This is from a Honeywell thermostatic radiator valve and the corresponding KV values shown on this graph here so you don't squint and really struggle you're almost guessing trying to draw lines on this valve to match up because you just won't be accurate you need to calculate using the the key value formula that we showed on the previous page okay also you will see 
This here is from a, this is also from the Honeywell Thermoset Radio Valve, the Valencia instructions. And you can see we've got a balancing ring inside here, which can be used for more accurate balancing. And how they use it, well, you've got, you've got the flow here in litres per and liters per, per second or liters per hour and we have our pressure drop here in millibar or kilopascals and we've got our kv value here okay so let's say we we want um well on this example here they've used 250 liters per hour and 100 millibar delta p across the valve okay so for that if we want that flow rate at this pressure drop we need a kv value of 0.8 which will give the balancing ring setting of 4. Now, larger radiators will want less resistance, so we will want a higher KV value, and smaller radiators we will want higher resistance, and therefore a lower KV value. Okay, so thank you for listening, and any questions, just ask.